Hi, my name is Erin and I am a senior Girl Scout. I am also an intern for the GSUSA's G Team, which is the Girl Planning Committee for the Girl 2020 Conference held in Orlando, Florida. I am from the Girl Scouts of Oregon and Southwest Washington Council, which on your map is all of Oregon and this first little bottom part of Washington. Today we will be going to we will be doing the cadet. Think like a citizen scientist journey which will be super exciting. And by the end of today, you will know how scientists solve problems. You'll be able to practice looking at understanding the world and you can learn to become and help real scientists. All right, let's get started. All right guys, so this activity will take you about an hour to complete, 15 minutes to set up and five minutes to clean up. The stuff you will need are some blank pieces of paper, a few pencils and coloring supplies like pens, markers, colored pencils, and crayons. You will also need your field tools when you're out in the environment gathering your data, in which case you may want a notebook with lined paper, some rulers to measure the distance between stuff, scissors in case you have to cut anything, a camera so you can take detailed photos of what you're seeing, as well as stuff like thermometers or a magnifying glass, anything that you'll need when you're looking at your environment. So let's get started. Scientists study nature, conduct research to better understand the world around them. They use what they've learned to create solutions to problems that we as humans, plants, animals, or the environment face. And to learn new things and to do the research, scientists use a process called scientific method. Today, we're gonna use the same process to find out how you can help real life scientists learn and discover new things. But what are the steps of the scientific method? And how do scientists use it? Well, the first step is observation. You're watching and noticing all of your senses, especially sight. The start of every experiment and discovery is when scientists look around and they find a place to learn more. You're not just looking, but you're thinking, and all scientists do it. So, the, what you're doing is you're getting data. You're getting a type of data. Data is just information. So, you could be taking notes on what you see. You could be doing drawings using a camera and taking photos or taking videos. You wanna record what's the temperature, what's the weather like, and then you wanna look around and explore the surroundings by collecting your data. So you're drawing and writing what you're seeing. Lots of detail. You can't have too much detail. You wanna talk about the size of what you're looking at, the colors, the amounts, and any questions that you have. Scientists collect data and ask questions about their observations. These are called scientific questions, and it is the next important step in the scientific method. With your observations, look back and think about what were they telling you? Then pick three of the most interesting observations and form a question for each. Choose one question that you're interested in trying to answer with observations and you are able to collect data from. The thing you're questioning is subject to the research, and the question you're trying to answer is the purpose of your research. Once scientists have a question, they must make an educated guess at what they think the answer might be. This is a hypothesis and it can be tested, but however, hypotheses aren't 100% right or wrong. If it's right, it just means that the scientist had more data about the subject, environments, and how it interacts with the world. So now look at your scientific questions. Do you think that you could turn it into a hypothesis? So use what you know to answer your scientific question. So next, try to answer your question by observing the subject one more time. Focus on taking field notes only on your subject. So use your field tools to add details about your subject's size, if it makes any sound, like if there's more than one. So you want to use like your ruler to measure the distance between two objects. Or use your camera to take a better photo instead of drawing. Make sure that you have a plan and you have your tools. And now go out and observe one more time. When scientists come back, they review their data and make sure that it matches what they know. So they reflect and they add new notes about what they think their data means. This is called data analysis. And it's another step in your process of the scientific notation. So there are so many different ways for you to analyze data. You can compare it to what others have found. You could present about it and tell your peers. You could see if you need more information. 
So once you have all your data collected, you need to create a field guide page about your subject. So you have your subject's name, you have a picture, you have where you've seen them, and other observations. Once you've done, create even more. Go look around your environment so you can tell the story about what's around you. After doing something new, it's a good idea to reflect on what you've learned, what you liked or disliked, and what you want to do next. So, once you've finished your first ever field guide, here are some questions you may want to ask yourself. What did you find most enjoyable? What did you learn and what do you want to learn now? Uh, what surprised you? Can you see yourself as a scientist? And how can you use these new skills in your day-to-day -day life? So, now that you know all about citizen science, what can you do next? The answer is to become a citizen scientist. Citizen science is when scientists ask regular people for help. An example would be a scientist might want to know about butterflies. Are they in different places? Are there fewer than before? And what does that tell us about them? So she needs a lot of info. So she would ask regular people like us to count the butterflies we see and then to send her that data. So what are you waiting for? You can be a citizen scientist with NASA. You can take photos of the night sky and send it to them through the Globe Observer Project. Or you can help identify plants with, an, with iNaturalist. Or you can play an online game called Stall Catcher to help with Alzheimer's research. There are endless possibilities that you can do. You can find all sorts of projects like this by going to scistarter.org in the upper right hand corner, by clicking on Partner Gateway, you're helping Girl Scouts get data too. SciStarter has over 6,000 citizen science projects for you to choose from. So go check out how to use SciStarter Guide for more information. And that's it. You guys have completed a part of the cadet. Think like a citizen scientist journey. Good job. If you liked this video, share it with other girls. Share it with other Girl Scouts. And if you liked this activity, we have more for Cadet Girl Scouts. And if you liked this one specifically, you can complete a citizen science project or a take action project, which will help you complete the rest of your citizen scientist journey. And if you're not a Girl Scout, come join the party. You can learn more at girlscouts.org. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you all have an awesome day.